Good morning, people. At least it's morning here. It's Sunday morning, and I've been a bit lazy. I haven't had the time to uh, post my workflow for, for uh, my uh, September 2021 challenge. Uh, if you like the challenge, please leave a comment. So I know you want to have more like this, or you just want to know how to do things, which most people want to know, <laughs> include myself. So we're going to do this part, and I know the interesting part people want to know is how to make these dimples or the hexagons that are cut nicely down. And they are so shiny when we do this in metal. Uh, but first, right click properties for anyone interested if you've done it. The volume I get is 46,144. Sometimes I get 145. It depends a little bit on how I create the threaded hole back here. Uh, that's not important, I know. But if you just want to follow along and see if you have get approximately the same numbers as I've gotten. So, of course, we're going to do a console, shall we? Yeah, we can throw this away. We don't need to look at that. Quit new one. Step number one: save your uh, save your file. Always save. Uh, let's see, twenty twenty one September pedal video like that. If you start to save, you start the auto recovery function in Fusion. And it's rule number one: create a pedal. I'm uh, sorry, <laughs> create a component. Always create a component. Like that, we have done that. We're gonna resize this and open up our little. We have OBS running in the background. There's our drawing. So let's see. We have a couple of dimensions. So step number one: make the basic shape of everything. And I'm gonna think I'm gonna do this from the front. And I do think I do the first thing I'll do. I'm gonna make uh, the hexagon just to help me. What the things are. I'm gonna make this a uh, construction. Use the center by origin point in the middle and it is oriented like that. So now it's constraints and dimensions. Let's dimension it the same way we have in the drawing. If it's that direction, it can be 20. And now we need to draw the parallelogram run around it. So we're going to do a rectangle and not construction, normal lines. It's going to do it like this. We're going to delete this constraint, delete this constraint. Until fusion, hold down control key, this line, uh, this line, and one side of the hexagon is going to be parallel. Like that, we have a nice uh, parallelogram. Line L for line, construction line from one edge or one vertex to one vertex. And we're going to use a midpoint constraint of this to the origin. You see, we're starting to get things in the right place. Uh, we're going to do some dimensioning. Uh, these two lines should be 80. These two lines should be 150. And by that, uh, as you can see, there are fillets on the corners. I do not sketch fillets. Remember, they are as simple as this because this gives me a much more stable sketch. Things are not flying around. And one other thing is, yes, uh, I will do this immediately now because I know I will pattern this hexagon stuff here. So I need to get some direction for the pattern. I really don't need one of them. This one is uh, like built in through the axis, but I still draw it just to remind myself. And the other direction I want is this. You can see, starting from the radian point out, finding the midpoint of these lines. So by that, we have everything we need in that sketch. Yes. We're going to make an extrude E. Uh, sorry, I took a profile. And the thickness was five. And I make sure now that I do the extrude away on my sketch because I want to sketch on the front of the body right over here five millimeters like that open up and up open up things here I have turned off auto hide of sketches it means I'm going to need to hide the sketches by hand if we want to see them anymore so we can do our fillet F on the keyboard let's zoom in uh, you can use some space now it's faster with the mouse now do it like this where are you you are up here that corner and uh, that corner. Sorry for the flying around. Uh, 10 was the radius. Yes. We're going to go back to home view and look from the front and have a look. So now we have the basic outer shape we want. Now we're going to do what we had more. Yes, we had a fillet on the back. We do one more fillet on this edge. It was two millimeters. So that is everything I need to do for now. So I like made the base shape I'm going to work with. Uh, I put going to put a threaded knot on the back later. Now, let's start doing the hexagon cutouts. So what this really is, is uh, a bit confusing to look at, but these are sphere cuts. They're not that strange. 
uh, and what we're going to do is looking at the far front this has to go I just draw here to know okay I want this to be 20 millimeters from this side to this side and we control uh, we're going to cut this as a sphere and with the sphere we can think of how we cut this the highest point of the from, from the bottom of the cut to the top is going to be these corners here so I want to create a sketch I want to turn so I have visibility of those corners like that P for project I want to project in this point uh, this point and I'm projecting the back side because I have dimensions if you have a look up here I mentioned I dimensioned it two millimeter from the bottom of from the back side of a pedal to the bottom of a cut so I want that it's okay I'm gonna hide the body hide my first sketch and here's the thing uh, something when you project inside of this you get a lot of extra information extra like lines which I something like to just uh, block block select from uh, left to right sorry and hit delete remove and here to remove still here I can see I have two lines that's overlapping I don't like that so they are both covering so I'm gonna move one of them this is all the information I need reduce your sketches makes them more like visible and of course let's have a body so we need the circle cut here now we're gonna make a circle and we're gonna do a three point circle with as for constraints by speed so we're gonna do one two and we're gonna need a third point and of course we want that somewhere not touching this line slightly off because we had a small dimension there d for dimension right clicks pick arc tangent because we're dimension from the tangent of a circle to this line out here and that was two millimeters and we need an axis to the revolve so you're just going to line uh, straight over we get a perpendicular to this or we could use horizontal and we do do a coincident between this line and the center point of the circle yes i could trim half a circle but uh, this makes it easier more visible when going back and looking at the sketches finish sketch s on the keyboard r e v for revolve the blue one we want a solid revolve select profile half a circle and this axis and we get a sphere but if we turn on our body we get a cut and we get this beautiful little cut and we say okay that's a good cut we turn off our second sketch turn on our first sketch we're gonna s and we're going to do a pattern a rectangular pattern of uh we can do faces faces a feature doesn't matter because we only one face so we can select that face uh the direction is going to be uh this one and the second line we did uh spacing is a distance type and uh I was a bit nice when dimensioning because this dimension here will also be the spacing of course you can do with the parameter so that's going to be 20 and that's going to be 20 and of course we want to do this symmetric symmetric and now we can just add up things uh, we are doing this uh, as a face pattern which is the one that's easiest on fusion but still if you go totally over top of this Fusion will uh, slow down to halt and maybe crash for you. We make sure the pattern covers everything of our body and we hit OK. And we have our nice uh, dimple pattern. Ooh, look pretty. And now I'm going to make the little uh, uh, connection on the back. Circle. Here it was uh, 14. Let's move it over like that. E for extrude. E for extrude, uh, that part is going to be 20 millimeters. Some right, correct direction, yes. I'm going to make a hole. You're going to make it on this face. Drag it over, it snaps to the center point. Uh, M8, 1.25, yes please. And the depth was 15. And I'm s now selected to have a bottom flat. Really in real world, if you're going to tap this, you're most probably going to have an angled on the bottom. But this is how I drew it for simplicity. So let's do it like that. And let's do it model for fun of it and hit OK. And with that, we should have done all the steps we needed. I'm going to turn off a sketch. We can turn all of them. Just collapse things and make it a bit prettier to look at. So, this is how I make this with not that many steps uh, and make a dimpled pattern, or what you call it. Uh, of course, you could do this the other way around. Put the sphere on so you get these spheres going outwards. Uh, but mostly, see, this, this is a I'm not a machinist, but this is not a hard pattern to machine specifically. So, I hope you enjoyed this. Take care, see you around, and goodbye.